Watch my homies, DJ80 here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the Equinox Helix XP 150 Gobo Flower. So let's take a look. Here they are in their boxes, and um, I bought them from Simply Sound and Lighting, and um, I also managed to get it as a bundle deal. So I got a free Equinox bag that was included for free when I brought the two lights. Okay, inside the box is pretty straightforward. We get the uh, Equinox XP. We get um, a manual and you also get this tiny little packet of metal gobos and you get a power lead. That's it. Uh, the power lead is one and a half meters long. I have recently just measured it. And um, I've had a little look at these gobos. That's a little balloon one there. And I think they're made of metal, they feel metal. But um, they come in this little plastic bag and I can see them getting broken. So what I've done already is I've just procured a little jewelry box from my daughter's bedroom and I'll be keeping them nice and safe in there. So let's take a look at the unit in a bit more depth. Right, initial thoughts, um, it's a lovely finish, there's no rattles. Um, it's not too heavy, it's not as heavy as I thought it was going to be. I think it's just under five kilograms in weight. And it is about, let's have a look, I did measure it, it's about 37 centimetres wide. Um, and then from that highest point to the back, it is about 26, 20 centi 27 centimetres from front to back. And then height wise at the bottom of the unit, it's about 12 centimetres high, um, unless you include the bracket, which takes it to about 20 centimetres high. Uh, you'll see at the top here, that's where we access the gobo wheel. So I'll do that in a little separate section on its own in a moment. Uh, just looking at the back of the unit here, uh, we've got the also familiar um, LED display with the four buttons. We've got um, a mic here to pick up sound, uh, sound to light. Um, it's DMX capable, so we've got an input and we can daisy chain it, so we've got an output as well. Uh, this port here is for the CAA controller. There is no controller included with these, so you'll need to have that separately. And what else we've got? And then we've got the power in and out, so you can daisy chain them. And I think it said up to 12, uh, 12 units on 240 volts. Um, Yep, 12 units at 240 volts or six fixture, uh, six units at 120 volts. So um, this is a, a UK unit, it's got the three pin plug. So we're running at 240, up to 240 volts. And then uh, you've got a little separate fuse area there to pop out. You've got your brackets on top to mount it. And underneath, there's also some mounting points here to mount that bracket so um, if you need to mount it upside down on your rig you just unscrew those four screws there and then put the bracket on the other side um, I'm not sure if I'm going to need to unscrew mine yet right let's have a look and see how we change a gobo all right, so to change the gobos, uh, you've got this gobo access panel here with these two screws. And these screws are spring-loaded as well. Um, so they're only hand tight, just undo them, and then that pops off. Obviously make sure the unit's cold before you do this and not hot. And be careful now when you take this off. 
because it has an earth wire attached to it too. All right, so you don't need to unscrew that earth wire. Um, you can just leave it attached and leave it like that. All right, so um, if we just take a quick look down there, these are our gobos. Uh, so after a few trial and errors, um, you don't need uh, a screwdriver. So you've got a little lip here. What you do is you just ease, ease that forward and there's two little pins on let me see if I can show you on each side. There's one there and there's one here and they slot into holes. So we ease that forward to remove those pins and then we using two fingers So there's the two pins at the top that you pull out and then when you pull it up it releases this third pin here which goes down into a little hole there I don't know if I can just uh, there can you see it just there and so that's where that pin sits so when you want to put it in you angle it forward Slot that bottom pin in first, and then you push, push this down, and it should, at some point, line up. That's it there. No. And so that's back in and um, I think I'm gonna have to put all the gobos in because I think all of these are the same they're all empty so push it forward put it out oh that does have a gobo in it I must have just picked an empty one right, what I will say is um, I won't want to be doing this at a gig so um, if you want to use the special gobos that's seasonal, I'd advise you to do this at home first. And to be honest, it's not the it's not the most straightforward There we go. So that one's back in. Yeah, it's um it's a little bit tricky so you need to take your time with that my worry was um yeah so you're just going to need to take your time with that i'm going to have a quick look for all of these gobos because some of these that first one that i tried that I took out actually didn't have a, a gobo on it at all but as you can see i've taken another one out and it does so i'm going to have to have a quick look at these um I don't like doing that to be honest with you this is really fiddly i'm sure there would have been an easier way maybe when they make the next model um, they'll do something um, a bit more user friendly so here's all the different gobos that we can um, change to and we've got some balloons heart pumpkin for halloween celebrate gla celebratory glasses snowflake little star and some bells there as well so I'm now going to show you how to change the actual gobos once you've uh, got that out. Alright, so to change the gobo, and here you can see this is the one that's in there already. And you'll see that there's a little circlip just going around the inside there. So what that is, is basically it's a spring naturally pushes outwards and what you have to do is put enough pressure on it so that it comes inside and pops out now i've got this tool here um, i'm quite lucky because if you see this little pack here this is um this is what i use uh, when i modify the inside of my car so it's a trim removal pack um, but if you haven't got something like this um, you're going to need to
you haven't got something like this, you're going to need to find something with a sharp point on the end. You don't get a tool supplied, which I think is an oversight on their part. Probably would be a good idea if they did. Um, and I've also decided that once I've changed these gobos, um, I'm not going to be changing them quite frequently. So um, you have to get the pointy end underneath the end of the circlip and pull it up like that. So I'm just gonna just gonna keep going like that. So we prise that off. There we go. So now that, that's the clip there. And then this is the gobo that I'm going to change. You can see I've already scratched it up slightly, just trying to remove the circlip. And then we'll put some balloons in. So silver side facing out. Put that on there like that. And then I have to put this back in. So I'll do one side. First, and then just push it so it's flush, he says. There, okay, so that's the clip back in. And that's how you change one of the gobos. Oh, ball ache. I'm not going to want to do this too many times. And the other thing is you'll see that there's just a slight film of oil that goes round there. Um, and every time you take this out, you're going to remove some of that oil. Uh, and that oil is important because it, it helps it turn. This is a cog mechanism. It works on a big cog, so it joins a bigger cog inside. So it needs to be able to turn, which is why it has the oil. Um, but each time you take that out and you've got it, you're holding it in your hands and moving it around, you're removing just a little bit of that oil. So I will, I think I'll change the ones that I need to change. Uh, actually, no, I think I'm going to put this back and then just try the light because I haven't actually even switched it on yet. So I'll put this back, actually try the light. Um, and then um, I'll change these other gobos um, later. But yep, that's how it's done. Take it out, as I showed you earlier. Remove that circlip. You'll need something like this to prise it up. Swap the gobos over and then put it back in. Just to help you if you do buy this and you're struggling to get these gobos back in, as I have. Just here, it's hard to see, but there's little clips here. And these bottom parts of the gobo slide under those clips. So those clips pinch it in place. Um, and it's, there we go, you can just about see it there. It's this here. This is a clip here, and it's got two little prongs. And then this slides in. Like that. And then that clip pinches it in place. see there that 
fit under that clip. Okay, um, I'm going to show you two video clips now of them in action. Uh, the first one is at a prom, a year 11 prom I did. And um, I did actually take uh, a separate video clip of the lights for this YouTube review and then stupidly deleted it off my phone. So the first clip you're going to see um, is from the same prom, um, but it was for a different reason. And uh, that will just give you a brief idea of how they look in a darkened room. To see what they're walking into. Okay, so we've just dimmed some of the lights for now. This is where I'm set up. So this second clip is at a year six levers disco I did. And um, I managed to actually uh, take the video clip for the light specifically. And um, it was daylight uh, as you'll see, uh, but have a look at this. And this is what they look like uh, in a room that's um, not quite as, as darkened. Okay, so uh, is that XP's all set up. This is actually a UV disco. I had to uh, jerry-rig these, uh, these lights onto this stand today because I had a disco yesterday. Um, and um, yeah, I had to mix everything up. But here they both are. It is seven o'clock in the evening and it's very light. Um, and then if you can see, I'll just show you through the window there. It's still sunny here in the UK. But this is the back of the hall here. Um, they're hooked up master and secondary and excuse the mess as I say this is as tidy as I can make it so that's my master plugged in and the secondary one on there and I've just got them on sound to light but that's what it looks like so you can see that they're quite clear if I put a track on I'm going to put some music on now and you can just see them move to the music you what they look like from this end. So um, I've got four battery UV up lighters and two uh, LED UV cannons in the middle there. So let's move on to the conclusion then. 
And as always, I'll start with the cons first. All right, these lights are £360 each at the moment. And I bought a pair. Obviously, you don't need a pair, but I did. And I did get this bag thrown in as well. So the price that I'm paying is because it's a 150 watt LED and it does gobo effects. And I'm unsure whether that's a good deal or not. So I'm putting it as a negative. Um, the power cable needs to be longer. I don't know why, why when they know these lights are gonna be mounted high, um, they insist on making as short as possible power cables for it. Um, <clears throat> I've got an extension bit on mine, um, which is an IEC connector. Uh, but yeah, just make the power cables longer. I think we'd all prefer to have a cable that's too long than a cable that's not long enough. I think um, you could probably, if you don't need one of these lights specifically, and when I say specifically, I mean something that has gobos on it, as far as guests are concerned, you could probably spend the same amount of money and get two or three cheaper lights that will offer the guests eye candy as well. <clears throat> so it really is a, a choice on whether you want to spend that much money on one of these or whether you want to spend that much money on two or three other lights which will fill the walls with light um, just as well and then let's get to the biggest uh, negative about this unit <clears throat> and it's changing these these gobos in here uh, an absolute drama a, a proper mission and, and you'd think for the year 2022 that there is a better way of doing it than the way that I've shown you in this video and <clears throat> this is the instructions that you get to show you how to do it that's it just that page it's not another page of them there's not more um it really is it's basic um and it if you're not handy you might struggle with them um in between doing these video clips i've seen plenty of posts on uh, dj pages on facebook asking um how to do it and what's the best way of doing it and is it supposed to be as difficult as as it seems and yes it is it is as difficult as it seems and I have changed the gobos now and I probably won't need to change them again unless I use this for a Halloween event. Um, but yeah, it's an absolute mission. And if you're not handy, you're not going to enjoy it. Um, so bear that in mind. You've seen how it's done. And I think long term, if you're a bit clumsy, there's a high chance you're going to break some of those gobo gobos or break some of the parts in them. So poor design, really poor. All right, let's go on to the pros then. Okay, so uh, one of the pros is they're for what they do, they're quite lightweight, less than five kilos or around five kilos, um, and they're easy to mount as well. Okay, so it's one unit, it's balanced, so it's not sort of doesn't flop about, doesn't move around when you're moving it. Um, you can lift it above your head and mount it on a pole. Um, they can also be plug and play, which is how I've used them. I've still not got myself into DMX yet, um, but I've got two. I put one on master, one on slave and use the long uh, DMX cable to make them work. And uh, they're fine, they do the job, they work to music um, and they move really well. Uh, you've obviously, another positive is you have a selection of gobos to choose from for different events. So whether that's a wedding and you wanna use hearts or whether it's Halloween or you know just the general party. So they, they are useful um, for specific events. So they're not just your generic light um and it is another positive is it is something different i mean I've, i struggle with this one but it is something different for your guests um I, i've always said um the guests won't really know the difference between your lighting you know they won't know if you spent 500 pound on a light or whether you spent 50 quid on a light um because they're not in the industry so a light is a light but if you consider that they might be sitting down for an hour um before the party really kicks off you've got hearts and balloons and whatnot going on the wall and it is just something a little different to dots the main reason uh, i purchased these was there was a lot of hype about them and i was sold about the 150 watt led 
and I had uh, a couple of really big events coming up and I didn't want to take a barrage of lights that would take me a long time to set up so I kind of went for the simplest option and um, these are great for big rooms um, <clears throat> obviously designed with that in mind and it really doesn't matter how far away the end of the room is uh, these do do the job so they are a big room light uh, they're obviously LED and not bulb so they should in theory last a lot longer and you won't have to be replacing bulbs um, also have a look at different websites I managed to get this bundle um, so I got the two lights and got the bag for free so that bag is probably 20 or 30 quid retail um, and that takes the edge off it a little bit so do hunt around different DJ stores will try and price match or offer you bundles um, <clears throat> I think it's a good light because one of its key selling points is it works really well without haze or smoke um, I'm a UK DJ and in a lot of our venues now we can't use haze or smoke because um, by law they have to have smoke alarms and um, these alarms are really quite sensitive so we're not able to use smoke and haze in you know the majority of the venues we go to and that that effect helps different lights you know if you've got lights that have beams and whatnot that 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 haze really helps make them look great and so these lights here look great without having to use that and it is probably one of their biggest selling points it's a light that looks brilliant um, and it doesn't need to be enhanced um and yeah that's that's pretty much all the positives i think for me personally I, I bought them because i had big events and obviously i can use them when i have more big events but they're not going out on every gig that i do um if I've got 100 people or less or if the room is not that big, I'm not taking them with me um, because I have other lighting that I can use that's easier to carry um, and set up. Um, so, um, but they are there for the big events. I think the biggest selling point about these is there are 150 watt LED that do project well without haze or smoke. And so you've got an effective lighting there. Um, and it's not a moving head and I think that's something for the market there what what I'd like to have done was paid maybe 200 pound for a 150 watt LED that isn't one of these with gobos but also isn't a moving head either it's just a light that's got something on the front of it that does move around um, but it projects really well without haze or smoke so I think there is something in the market there but um, it's yet to be developed so that's my conclusion then for the Equinox XP. I'll let you make up your mind whether it's suitable for you or not. Um, if you haven't, not doing big rooms, then I'd probably say don't bother. But um, if you've got money to spare or if you wanna jump on the bandwagon um, and you are doing big rooms, then you can't really go wrong with one of these. So thanks for watching. I've been DJ80 and um, don't forget to click subscribe and like and I will see you next time. Bye for now.